Hello friends. So you'll notice I have some props standing by because some of my friends happen to have props at home. So you can always have a blanket or block standing by. I'll speak to where and if and how you might use them. But as with all the poses, uh, 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 yogurt that I'm teaching right now, I'm teaching, trying to teach it without props so that even my friends who don't have them can. That said, a blanket, most of us have a blanket at our house, whether or not it's a Mexican blanket. We're going to do a couple things on the knees. So you might want to have that blanket underneath your knees. Not necessary, right? And if it's a Available, you're going to try to uncurl your toes and you're going to try to sit back and work from here. If that's not available, maybe it's available to curl your toes under and work from here. If that's not available, just come to a seated posture and you'll do the beginning of the class with your legs cross-legged or even sitting, I'm pointing to a chair you can't see, or even sitting up on a chair. All of these things are beautiful. Nothing is right or wrong. You're just finding a place where you can pause, right? Close the eyes. We're going to take five breaths together for our, our beginning awareness. Inhale, filling up from the belly to the nose. Exhale, soften the muscles of the face. Inhale, filling up from bottom to top. Exhaling, releasing the neck, the throat, the shoulders through the arms, hands, and fingers. Inhale, filling up. Exhale through the torso, all the way down to the belly and the low back. Inhale, filling up. Exhale the hips, down the legs, the feet, and the toes. And let's take one more breath here. Inhale, filling all the way up. And exhale, side out of your mouth. <sighs> Whatever that is to you. Right, let's do one more of those actually. Six breaths, inhale. And exhale. Go ahead and open those eyes. I don't even think I said, hello friends, <laughs> it's Sicho Yoga. I'm like, let's get to business. So, uh, uh, cause I started this a few different times. So I think I forgot to add that into the beginning of this one. We're working with the lymphatic uh, system today, our immune system. And uh, this is gonna be movement, right? There will be some challenges, but I'll give modifications if you're not feeling up to the challenges for any reason today. Bring your arms by your side, trying to stay here if you can, if you can't, it's okay. Inhale, bringing the arms up. Exhaling to your right. Inhale, arms up. Shoulder injury, you could always bring it forward. Exhale, over to the left. Inhale, arm up, forward or to the side. Exhale over to the right. You could leave your hand on your hip. Inhale. I'll show that version. Exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale, right? So hand on hip or arm extended. Inhale. Last one. Exhale. Inhale. Both arms up. And exhale. So now we're gonna move into a twist. If you need to come out of this, you do. This will be the last thing and then we'll come out. I'm trying to get compression in the back of the knees and the front of the hips on purpose here. Uh, uh, and I'll talk about why in a second. So you're gonna inhale and lift your right arm up, forward and up. And then exhale, you're gonna reach it back behind you, turning to your right. Inhale forward and exhale. Let's figure better breath. Inhale up. Left arm, exhale, turning to the left. So as we turn forward, let's lift the right arm up. There we go, now we're talking. And exhale back. Inhale, turning forward as you lift your left arm. So it's almost like a swimming motion. Exhaling into the twist. One more on each side. Inhale, turning forward. Exhale, rotating in. Inhale, turning the body forward as the left arm reaches up. And exhale, reach that back into your twist. And then turn the body forward. Okay, let's uncurl. Uncurl. Let's come onto hands and knees. Let's open up the backs of the knees, curl the right toes under, and just start to push a little forward and a little bit back. And then bring that knee down and do the same thing on the left side. So just opening up the back of the knee particularly, but also a little bit the front of the hip. And go ahead and bring that back. 
and we're going to take a downward dog. So walk your hands a little bit in front of your shoulders, curl your toes under, and start to make your way back into downward dog. Now, if you want a modification, you might simply do a child's pose with the arms reaching out in front of you. You might just do hands, knees, and a couple of cat cows. We'll meet you there in a moment. Maybe you bend the right knee and straighten the left leg a couple of times, right? Pedaling back and forth between the legs. And then let's all bring our knees down. Keep the toes curled under today. And with an inhale, we're going to push into the ground and reach the spine up to the sky or pull the low belly in. Exhale, shoulder blades down the back to reach the chest forward. So yes, cat, cow. I'm going the opposite of how I often teach it. Inhale, pull the belly up, round the spine, release the neck, the tongue, the jaw, the brow. Exhale, shoulder blades down the back. Now you can keep doing that, or maybe you add in barrel rolls, right? So I often talk about thinking you're in a wine barrel and you're trying to get your rib cage, the lower part of the rib cage, to roll around and hit all the sides of that barrel. Go ahead and go the other direction with that. So our lymph nodes, the biggest pockets of lymph nodes lie behind our knees in the front of our groin, in our armpits and in our neck, and then around the spine and in the brain. So we're going to play with that a lot today. Yeah. So from there, we're going to go ahead and we got one more move. And that is, can you reach your right hip and your right shoulder towards one another? You might even turn the head and look that way. And then come back through center. So almost like you're waving your tail, right? Wave your tail to the left, your left shoulder to the left, and turn and look back. And do that for yourself on your own pace a couple of times. Don't go too quick. Remember, we're also trying to settle down our central nervous system these days. If you're breathing really fast, if your eyes are moving really fast, if you're moving bodily, right, physically really fast, you are starting to excite your central nervous system. We don't want to do that right now. At least not for the purposes of this class, right? Come to hands and knees. Walk your hands a little bit in front of your shoulders. And downward facing dog. Again, if that's not right for you, you might do hands, knees, cat, cow. You might stand up and walk over to a counter and put your hands on a counter and do your version of downward dog. If you're not sure, post, email me. I'll tell you what you can do to modify it and make it your own. Coming down, we got one more thing down here and then we'll come on up, right? You're gonna curl your toes under, keep your hands a few inches in front of your shoulders and you're gonna push back to downward dog. And then you're gonna inhale forward towards a half plank, right? And if you need to move your hands a little forward, I just noticed I do, they're not quite under my shoulders, I do that. And then exhale back towards a child's pose. It's a different version than usual. Inhale forward, shoulder blades down the back towards a half plank. The knees are going to stay down right now, especially my eager beavers. Yeah. Exhale back just as far as you can. You might not go as far as me. That's okay. Inhale forward to a half plank. You might stay right here and just hold a half plank. That might be pretty. Keep that low belly zipped up. You might reach your heels back and lift the legs, but don't let the belly drop. Don't let the shoulders round forward and the upper back round up. Take an inhale and exhale back. Let's meet in downward facing dog. You can be on hands, knees, and just work the right leg forward. We're going to be there with you in a moment. Otherwise, you're going to go ahead and you're going to reach the right heel up into the sky behind you. Square hips. The hip does not lift for this one today. Bend the knee, right? Bend the uh, knee, heel towards buttocks. Now bring your knee to your chest, look forward, and try to float that right foot forward. And when it doesn't float, forklift it. Bring your left knee down, uncurl the toes. My friends with blocks, have them about where your hips are-ish. That's where you'll want them for this next move. And then inhale, reach the chest forward. Maybe you reach those arms up. Maybe you stay right here on blocks or on the ground, right? And then we're going to pull the frontal hip points up and get nice and long. I want you to feel like you're dragging your right heel back a little bit as you drag your left knee a little forward so you feel that pelvic floor start to light up. And hello, front of the left hip. Yes, the psoas, no doubt about it. But we're also getting into the lymph nodes, right? We're opening that up. So we're going to squeeze and compress, right? Get the old fluid out. And now we're opening it so new fluid can move in. Right hand, right thigh. Lengthen out of that left side waist over to that left side of your room. 
and inhale, both arms are gonna reach up. And on an exhale, we're gonna come back to blocks or to ground. Oh, sorry, curl your left toes under. And you're gonna to start to sit back towards that left heel, whatever that is in your body. It doesn't have to look like mine, it might be a lot higher, yeah? And then inhale, you're gonna swing those arms forward. Gently reach them, keep the toes curled under for this version today. Exhale, I'm gonna show what it would look like if you were gonna use blocks. You might use blocks here. Yeah, and then you would just leave them there as you inhale forward. Find your rhythm, your pace. It doesn't have to be mine. But as always, the one thing that I invite you to do is to slow everything down as much as you can in your body, right? Having more reps, quote, of something is not better, not in my world, not in this practice today. And then when you end up forward the next time, you in your body, right, will meet there. No rush to get there. And then we're going to exhale and bring the hands down. Feel free to use the blocks here. They can come in a little bit. You're going to curl or lift the left knee. And you can go ahead and you're going to step that left foot in a little bit so that you can get that left heel down to the ground. Yeah? So that might be an even shorter stance than me. You might feel like you're on a tightrope, so you might walk your feet a little bit away from the center line of the mat, so you're more, in a, more of a, a ski stance, right? Not so much on a tightrope. You're going to bend the knees a little bit, and from there you're going to try to roll up, yeah? So try to roll up one vertebrae at a time. I would find maybe something to gaze at about by your right big toe so that your head stays steady, uh, your gaze for your balance. Inhale, maybe those arms reach up. Pyramid. Now you might just stay right here, working the right foot back, left thigh forward. You might join me for movement. Exhale, bend the knees a little bit in the transition, coming down the blocks to the ground into pyramid. We're rolling up today, right? So again, try to roll up, maybe looking about where that right foot is or somewhere in that realm. As you roll up, so you have a steady gaze, but then bring it all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale. Bending the knees a little bit, particularly for transitions as you fold in. One more. Inhale, rolling up. When you get up, maybe those arms reach up. This one, I'm in love with this. Um, you're going to go ahead, maybe. Arms out to cactus arms. Now, you're going to go ahead and you're going to try to come up on your tippy toes and bend your knees. And now we're going to start to turn to our right until we can try to bring the left knee down. If you need hands or blocks, you use them. But if you don't, uh, if you were using blocks, you might want them out of the way. Right? You're going to try to turn and turn and turn and come all the way down until you are in cow face. Right? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it just so you can see it on the front side. And then you're going to keep turning until you're looking over your right shoulder-ish. And you don't have to actually look that way, you just turn the head as far as it comfortably can. Now keep the chin there, but the gaze might continue to go a little further, maybe not. And now here's your next challenge. You might use blocks, you might use hands. We got all kinds of bodies trying to do this sequence. So you are doing what feels challenging to you. You could always sit on a block right here, right? For someone who it's available to, it doesn't make us better humans, we're going to go ahead and start to put the weight in the left knee and rock up. And we're going to put the weight in the right foot when we get it lined up and come back up into pyramid pose. And maybe you stay there the whole time and now we're together again. Oh, there's that holy sweater again. And exhale. You're going to try to bring the arms down and step back to downward facing dog. And I'm going to change my direction so I end up facing you with the next one. Now, we're going to go ahead and let's bring our, oh, now I'm all goofed up on what foot we need forward. We'll need the left leg forward. I think that's appropriate. <laughs> if I goofed up, I'm sorry. Bring that right leg in a little bit until you get your stance. Feel free to bend the knees, pull in your blocks, right? And you might just stay right here. You might reach the chest forward. That might be your pyramid today. If you want movement and it's available, play with your balance. Pushing the heels down, right? Pushing the bottom out of the left big toe, we roll up and reach our arms up. Exhale, bending the knees a little bit as we fold out over the legs. Long legs, that said, if they need a bend, you take that. 
Inhale, slowly rolling up. If it helps you to fix your eyes at a particular point or widen the feet away from the center line of the mat. Exhale, folding in. Maybe you just stand and work the feet into the ground and you don't add the movement in. Inhale, rolling up, reaching the arms up, bending the elbows by the side. You might stay here. You might come up on a tippy toes, bend the knees, and then we're gonna turn to our left and bring that right knee as gently as you can down and try to sit down. Maybe we sit on a block here, right? And then we're gonna keep turning to the left. My left hand's behind me, right hand on my outer left knee, and I gently move in. I don't force myself into this. My eyes might go further than my chin. And turning a little forward. Here's your challenge. You might use blocks, you might use hands, you might just stay right here for the rest of class. <laughs> Put the weight in the right knee. Pivot to the front of your mat, weight in the left foot, curl your right toes under, and try to stand up and reach up. Exhaling down, stepping back to downward facing dog. Oh my gosh. What have I gotten you into? I love you. Inhale. On the exhale, we're going to walk our hands back to our feet. Maybe bend the knees and roll up on an inhale until you come all the way up to standing. And go ahead and walk out into the middle of the mat. So now we're going to try to add this into a sequence without talking as much. This is going to be the big whoo one, right? So you're going to modify. You might take this pedis out or not put the knee down, All whatever you need to do to um, adjust this for yourself. Yeah. Hands, knees, cat, cow, and child's pose. Two of my favorite things. I do them every day and you can always go to those. So we're going to just do it right from standing. Pyramid. Right foot forward. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, Go ahead and fold over. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold over. Inhale, rolling through the spine. So now we're back in familiar territory. Arms reaching over, arms cactus. Come up on the tippy toes, bend the knees. Turning to the right, bringing the left leg down. Trying to bring yourself down using hands or whatever you need. Go ahead and bring that into the twist and complete through the twist. And then inhale with an inhale, saguaro cactus. Weight on left knee, right foot down, swiveling forward, coming up into pyramid. Bring the hands down on the hips, step the left foot forward, step the right foot back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, feel free to bend the knees as you fold into your pyramid. Use blocks if you'd like. Inhale, chest works forward. Exhale, soften in. Inhale, rolling up, reaching the arms overhead. This part's crazy. I know, don't be scared of yogurt just because I put this in. Exhale, tippy toes, bending the knees. Pivoting, rotating to your left until your right knee can make it down. Sitting down. I'm on a block this time. Excellent. <laughs> Go ahead and turning into the twist. Feel free to have those blocks right next to you to use them. Turning forward. Cigaro cactus. Weight in the right knee. Turning towards the front of your mat. Curl toes under and push the floor away. Reach the arms up. And exhale, hands to the hips. Step forward. Walk your feet out as wide as your mat. My friends who know their hips are tight, you might want to block, you might not, right? But we're all going to come down to a squat. We'll just be at different levels in our squat depending on our particular body. I'm going to turn this way now so you can see me this way, yeah? So from there, inhale the arms up. Exhale, begin to squat down. Now for my friends with tight hips, you might just place your hands on your knees or on blocks and you might be right here and this might be like, oh yeah, that is plenty. Some of my friends, you were able to get lower. So where's your edge? It might be elbows on knees, right? It might be that you drop in. But some of my friends, oh, we get really sloppy. I'm in your, I'm in your category too and I don't mean it as an insult, right? But suddenly we're just simply hanging, blah. 
We don't have anything supporting us, right? So I want you, I want everybody to push into the feet and see if you can't push the legs into the arms, arms into the legs, lengthen the spine, but that feet pushing down, it should almost feel like there's a little lift. It's not that I'm asking you to lift the buttocks. I'm not. I'm asking you to push the feet down. And when you do your pelvic floor turns on, find that line from the pelvic floor up the front side of your spinal column, all the way through the crown of the head, wherever you're working from, we're almost there. I swear, I swear. This one's a big one for some of my friends, but it's helping your lymphatic fluid flow. Bring the fingers back. Whew, come on down. <sighs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a little core work. And that'll be the last of the strength part of it. I'm going to move closer. I just want to make sure I'm trying to do a 30-minute video for my friends. Okay, so if you have a block or a book or a soup can, you might have it handy. If not, you're just going to do it without the block, right? So from hands and knees. Go ahead and move your right knee and your right elbow into the block or into an imaginary block. And you're just going to try to hold that there the whole time without moving that. Extend your left leg out. Extend your left arm over. Take an inhale. And with an exhale, you're going to go ahead and you're going to bring your elbow and your knee together. Left. Inhale, lengthen it out. Exhale. For some of my friends, you might add on lifting the head up into it. I personally am not going to do that. I am taking a lot of tension in my neck and my upper back these days. I don't need more there. And when I do that, I start to work my neck muscles. They don't have to work right now. They're holding on with a lot of tension these days. So I'm going to try and give them as much softness as I can. So you find out what's right for you. Are you still holding your block or your imaginary block between the right knee and the right arm? Is that staying steady as you isolate into one side of your body? And reaching it out, bring the left hand onto the block, move the block out of the way, bring the arms down, out a little bit from the side palms up, arms extend, and just notice what you notice about your body. Okay, left knee comes towards the body, left elbow comes in, and you're pinching a block or an imaginary block or a book or whatever you just found to make that happen. Lengthen your right leg out, lengthen your right arm over, inhale is, is that, yeah? The exhale crunches the elbow and the knee in together. Inhale up. Again, if you want to add the low ribs floating down to try to lift the head up, please do. But if, like me, you're someone who holds a lot of your stress and your tension in your neck and your upper back, I'm going to suggest you leave the head down and you get the core without adding to the tension you already have in that upper body, right? So find the one that works for you. More is not better. Oh my gosh, if anyone learns anything from me, oh, that would make me so happy if that would be what it is, yeah? And then from there, you're gonna leave that right leg where it is, right hand's gonna grab the block, lengthen it out, pausing for just a moment here. You might adjust the shoulder blades or the hips or whatever you have to and just notice the body. So I'm gonna do one more move. Now for my friends who have a block, you're gonna use a block. If you have a couch cushion, a pillow, or a blanket to do this, I'm going to suggest you hit pause and you go and you grab it if you can, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring the block or the support system, whatever it is, underneath our sacrum. So not the low back. You shouldn't have the butt dropping down. Your, your, um, your sacrum is uber supported on this block, yeah? Or a blanket or whatever you're working with. And if that doesn't work, don't, don't work with what you have under you because we're gonna lift our feet in a second, potentially. Slide the shoulder blades down the back. You can try to get on the tops of the shoulders a little bit. You can feel free to grab your mat if you're working on a mat, or you can just turn your palms up or make, make a, a, a robot arms. All of these things are really wonderful, yeah? And then from there, I want you to go ahead and just notice that your knees are above your hips or above your heart, yeah? So your lymphatic fluid is able to flow pretty freely right now. It doesn't have a heart. It doesn't have something that pumps it. It, it moves through muscular action, right? And again, so we've been going through a lot of compression, especially in all of our pits, our knee pit, our hip pit, our armpits, right? And then we open it up so that the fluid can then move on, right? So it comes through that muscular contraction, compression, 
open compression, open compression, open. So now we get, we're, we're going against gravity right now. This is beautiful. And you might just stay right here. Stage two, you might lift maybe just one leg and then switch it out and do the other, but you're gonna keep the heels towards the buttocks and just stack the knees above the hips. Now, if your belly just went crazy clamping on and you're not feeling comfort here, I'm not sure why you would choose this version. If it's okay to extend the legs up, you might extend the legs up. Right, All of these versions are giving me that beautiful fluid movement from my lower body to my upper body. So you don't have to be in this pose. You're in the one where you feel comfortable. Right? Now go ahead and for my friends who have the feet up, point through the toes for just a second and let the toes be the highest part of your body. My knee friends, let the knees gently move up. Right? And even here, you can think about the knees gently extending forward and away from you on a diagonal. Now, for my friends who have knees up, one more thing. My feet, friends with feet on the ground, you're okay where you are. Be careful about a block underneath you. You don't want that to move. You might even put your fingertips on it. You might not, right? Or you might have to move it up. You're going to go ahead and you're going to bring the knees in towards the chest. So it's a super gentle version of plow. If you have neck issues, you might not do this. Make sure you're not lengthening or compressing your neck down into a reverse cervical curve. Imagine you had a blanket, and you might even have a blanket, with a little blanket roll underneath the neck so that your cervical spine is totally supported even while you hug those knees in. So this is a very gentle version of plow pose. If you want to extend the legs over you, you can. I'm not going to. I have a reverse cervical curve. So this is as far as I go with plow these days, right? And if you know plow version or you want to come up onto the hands and work it from there, you're welcome to do it from here as well, right? Again, I'm not going to join you there today. I go a lot gentler for the safety of my neck personally. Soften the neck and the tongue and the jaw and the brow. And then we're all going to release down. Left foot down and the right foot down or vice versa. Lift the hips, move the block, roll down. Extend the legs out, palms up, arms out. Close the eyes. Notice your body, your physical body. Yes, most definitely. But definitely your energetic body. Do you feel sensation, pulsing, throbbing, pain, temperature? Right? So tuning into our sensory body, our energetic body. Maybe take a moment and go into thinking about the lymph nodes, the lymph nodes in the neck. And pay attention to the lymph nodes in the armpits. You might send them love. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Think about your lymph nodes that wrap down and around the spinal column. You don't have to know exactly where they are. You just know they exist. That's okay. And then bring your awareness down into the front of your hips and think of there being lymph nodes down there that we moved fluid through today and helped open. And then the back of your knees. And then just do a general once all over, scanning the body. If you're holding tension, release it. Maybe wiggle fingers and toes as we bring movement back into the body. If you want to stay here, I encourage you to stay here as long as you want to stay here. Right? But for the purposes of the video, I'm going to get you up. Feet on the ground at the knees, then. So gently, so slowly, roll over to your side body. The top hand's going to come in front of your body. Let your head be heavy here, right? It might come to the bicep or whatever that is. And then when you come up, let the head stay heavy. Think of it as a 13-pound bowling ball so that the neck doesn't, doesn't have to work so hard to try to bring you up. So push into the arm, the top hand, whatever that is. Neck is soft, neck is soft, neck is soft. We come up and we can sit on a chair. We can sit cross-legged. We can kneel. We can sit with our back against a wall. The light that shines within me sees and honors the light that shines within you. Namaste.